Good morning. Thought I'd come on and talk a little about how do we do this thing called quieting the mind that I don't know if you've noticed, if you've tried this, I find most people I've worked with, including myself, this idea of quieting the mind. It sounds simple, right? Even might sound easy, but it's really not. It can be simple in the things that we might do and try and use to accomplish such things, but especially in today's world, in our busy culture of information and media, technology, so much coming at us, right? So much busying the mind that for a lot of us, this idea of quieting the mind feels maybe nearly impossible. But I'm here to tell you some things that make it easier to realize how you can actually do this and use this. <laughs> the first thing is that we're not talking about totally quieting the mind for long periods of time. Sure, that could be our goal. And maybe some of us humans in these times accomplish that, realize that, discover that, are able to do that. But I'm more fascinated in helping us realize the power of, first of all, just quieting the mind. So whether or not we actually get the mind completely quiet for very long with the various practices we're using, for instance, we can see that just this, this sense of quieting the mind, just getting it quieter, can be what we could be just even aiming for. So first of all, just simplifying easing up on our goals with things like, yes, meditation, mindfulness. So many of these practices are built to help us do this. Even yoga, really at its heart, is meant to be something that helps us experience this, create this, cultivate this ability to quiet the mind. And then some of the magic that can happen there. So I've loved to learn and discover and share and try and even prescribe <laughs> now with the people I get to work with ways to quiet the mind. And a little reminder on some of why we want to quiet the mind is first of all, we start to see as we become more of an observer with ourselves, which is a lot of what we do with a lot of these practices, just any form of meditation, any form of yoga, is going to invite us to become more of the observer with ourselves. So when we start to observe ourselves, observe that mind, first thing we notice is, yes, it's super busy, right, for most of us. Lots of thoughts rolling through, lots of memories, lots of anticipating worries, right? Things we're imagining, things we're thinking about. And when we start to observe this, we start to notice that what we're thinking about, what we're focusing on, what we're imagining, has a lot to do with how we're feeling, right? And definitely a lot to do with what we're even creating. If we want to get into the consciousness and the awareness that what we're thinking about, what we're imagining is a part of how we're feeling, how we're vibing, and absolutely what we're creating, right? So there's lots of good reasons to look at what we're doing in that mind and how it's related to how we're feeling and what we're experiencing. But yeah, as we start to become more of that observer, we notice that mind pretty busy and often with thoughts, memories, anticipations, worries that aren't particularly helpful, right? That may even be somewhat harmful and even a big reason why we're feeling bad, whether it's anxiety, depression, various mood stuff, right? Even ways we might be feeling in the body that have to do with what we're thinking, what we're imagining, what we're focusing on, right? and definitely what we're experiencing in life. So when we become this observer, we realize that mind is so busy and often up to no good, <laughs> right? So we start to see why a lot of these practices were developed years and years and years ago as part of a psychology and awareness and perspective with ourselves that that mind can get so busy and even kind of out of control and not helpful, right? And a big source, maybe the source of a lot of our mood issues, our m mental health challenges, and even our physical ailments, right? So we take a look, we notice that mind's busy, it's up to no good, and <laughs> what are we going to do about that? So 
But also we know that mind can be so helpful and powerful and such the source of our creating. So this is a lot of what we get to play with when we do things like quieting and a lot of the why behind quieting the mind. <clears throat> and then we also know now when the mind is quiet, the scientists have been researching this, what happens to the brain, and we shift into being more focused, more creative, more able to solve problems, when we're able to just add in some elements of quiet, for the mind and even if it's just seconds at a time two to five seconds of quiet and and or just this quieting that yeah we become we get a break from that thinking we actually get to refresh the mind replenish the, re, the creativity the problem solving aspects and also get a chance to redirect the mind in that quiet right give it a chance to slow the momentum of those thoughts and it's all energy, so really giving a break, a chance to shift and redirect the thoughts. And then we can even consciously start to focus with things like affirmations, visualization to redirect that mind, right? And then absolutely, if you're interested in spirituality, connecting more with your heart, your soul, your truth, your God, the universe, whatever you call it, your spirit team, it's, it's well discussed <laughs> in the spiritual worlds of practices uh, that quieting is where we're going to do that connecting, right? Quieting is where we become more receptive, more open to listening to that guidance from that more spiritual part of us and life. So in that quiet, we also get a chance to reconnect spiritually, be more awake and aware and in the moment and receptive and hearing the good ideas, noticing the synchronicity, more in the magic. So the quiet is so powerful even when we do just quieting anything that quiets the mind at least quieter right if not completely quiet and just playing with the power of two to five seconds of quiet could you start to play with create experiment with even just allowing not forcing allowing two to five seconds of quiet for your mind and doing this through your practices with your practices and that's where we start to see that anything can be a form of meditation. Even washing the dishes can be an absolutely awesome form of meditation or a mindfulness practice. So let's just use that as an example. But of course you can do more formal practices where you're sitting on a cushion meditating or taking a walk or in the bath or on your horse or out on a surfboard or in a conversation, right? But when we start to just, first of all, become more of that observer with ourselves, and we learn to do that with all of our practices, and we're noticing what is on the mind, but even that starts to quiet the mind, to just become more of a listener with ourselves. So that's tip one, that just anytime we make that shift to becoming more of a listener with ourselves, that we just start to listen to the inner conversations, the self-talk, what we are thinking about, what we are imagining. We just start to listen and notice. So just becoming that observer, that listener, that's a first way to start to quiet your mind, especially when you bring in the very important therapeutic element of non-judgment with that observing and that noticing. So you're noticing, maybe even just while you're washing the dishes, you're becoming more of that observer with yourself. So that is the first way to start to quiet your mind is just to start to become the observer. Listen more. And a listening mind already becomes quieter and, and we're doing less talking to ourselves, right? And more listening to ourselves. So it already slows and lulls the conversation, right? So that's a way to instantly start to quiet the mind just to become more of a listener with ourselves and our thoughts. Bringing in that non-judgment really helps too because often it's that judgment as we watch what we're thinking, right? And we start to judge it and decide whether it's good or bad or right or wrong, it creates more internal dialogue and more thoughts, right? So the judgment is part of the quiet, or the non-judgment <laughs> is part of the quieting. Judgment creates busier mind, right? So that's why non-judgment is a second practice that helps us quiet the mind, just to bring that in anytime, anywhere with ourselves. It's gonna quiet the mind versus judgment, right? Which gives us more to think about and actually does the opposite to the mind. So becoming the listener, the observer, bringing in that non-judgment. And then also becoming more of a listener observer in our moment, 
in a mindfulness way. So like washing the dishes, just starting to be more in the body, starting to feel the soap and the warm water on your hands and being present with what you're touching and your feet on the floor and hearing sounds around you and looking at the sights around you and noticing all of the elements of your moment as a way to that starts to quiet your mind, just to become more in your body, in the moment, more listening, more feeling, and just being that in the moment is going to quiet your mind as well. So that's third easy way. And then we have other things that we do, like lots of ways to relax ourselves, any ways that we can relax the body. Interestingly, helps quiet the mind. And then beautifully, the more that we quiet the mind, it helps that body to relax, right? Because often that body's responding to those thoughts. So any practices of relaxation, so even while we're washing the dishes, for instance, if that's our practice we're using as an example, then we're able to add a more relaxed approach with how we're holding the body. And that's gonna start to quiet the mind, interestingly. And even just focusing on relaxing, right? And that's what a lot of our practices of meditation are about. It's just how we're using our focus and our attention so just deciding to focus on relaxing is going to give your mind a little something different to do and quiet it. And then the energetic shift of relaxing is going to help your mind relax. And then you can also just another kind of this is more of a visualization tool that I love is you could imagine, play with, experiment with the idea that your mind is just another muscle that you could relax while you're washing those dishes or doing anything as a way to quiet it, right? And then next tool I feel like it's important to bring up is breath, right? There are th probably thousands of breath practices out there and I look forward to sharing more of breath practices that I know because they're a huge powerful way to quiet the mind because the breath is an instant way to get our attention, right? It brings us into the moment just focusing on our breath. So not even changing the breath, but just even while you're washing the dishes to just decide to be with your breath more to notice your breathing, to follow your breath with your attention. That's gonna to start to quiet your mind. Again, even if it's just two to five seconds at a time. And then adding more of a slow, deep, conscious breath, which is gonna help you relax and have a lot different energetic, energetic experience to breathe more fully and slowly. This too is gonna to help quiet your mind. And really just any focusing on anything helps quiet the mind, but the breath is an awesome one. So again, if the dishes is our example today, while you're washing the dishes, just being more with your breath is gonna help you quiet that mind, right? Which remember means it's gonna help slow and stop your thinking while you're also getting to be more of that observer with it all. And it's all gonna, also gonna help you start to redirect your thinking, and that quiet, even just two to five seconds. And it's also gonna help you become more receptive spiritually, right? listening for that guidance, that inspiration, those good ideas, that truth, right, that you might be ready for, <laughs> whatever it relates to in your life. So using those aspects are some of the powerful, simple ways that we can be quieting that mind. And then certainly any form of movement, can be a way to quiet the mind again because of a lot of it, it's bringing in our attention. So washing the dishes, doing yoga poses, of course, taking a walk, anything, that action can bring us more into the body, more into the moment, and helps us quiet the mind. And stillness also can do that for us. Just deciding to be more still can help. So stillness and movement both are tools that help us quiet the mind. And then certainly while we're doing any of these things, there are all sorts of ways that we can imagine, focus, feel that help quiet the mind. Some of my favorites are, like I mentioned, just relaxing the mind like another muscle as a way to clear and quiet the mind. And remember, could it just be two to five seconds of quieting or absolute quiet that you could allow or create for the medicine of that? Another one I love that I got from one of my favorite yoga teachers who's been a big influence on a lot of yoga teachers, Eric Schiffman, taught me this one probably at least 10 years ago, that you can do anytime, anywhere, in the middle of anything, where you can imagine, see, play with the idea of windshield wiping your mind. 
You could imagine that you could do a clearing and a quieting, just decide to maybe see that windshield wipe happen, feel it, and just to clear it and quiet for two to five seconds. Power that, and then yeah, maybe we start to get longer periods of quiet, right? And it becomes easier and more of a habit and more of a way of being that becomes more familiar, <laughs> right? But I just, I get the sense for a lot of us these days, whether we think we have issues with our attention or not, that this approach could really help us quiet the mind more and get the benefits of it. Just being a little lighter, a little more playful, and a little more loving about the truth of the fact that so many of us have these very busy minds. So even to quiet it down, much less quiet it just for two to five seconds is huge. So we can do that windshield wipe. We can also imagine, think about images that might quiet us and focus us, like maybe a clear surface of a lake does that for you. Just thinking about that, focusing on that, imagining that for two to five seconds to quiet your mind. Or maybe a, a clear blue sky, or, or you can start to see that any image and really what you're doing is you're playing with your attention, your focus, right? And letting these things help you quiet that mind for all those good reasons that I started with. <laughs> so I'm hoping that's helpful to just help you see the simple yet powerful ways that we can be playing with quieting the mind throughout the day, whether we feel like we're in the midst of something that feels like a practice or that we can just start to see that just going through daily life can become a practice, right? And how much can we bring this into even things like being in conversation, right? Just listening to someone else talk, of course, right? <laughs> Is a great way to quiet the mind. And But just how much better are we able to listen to others when our mind is just a little quieter? But often what's helped it quiet, right, is that listening. Being willing to listen to ourselves helps us quiet it and then bringing in that non-judgment is the big one that I'm still always learning and practicing and remembering. But it's definitely part of the reconnect and the medicine. So hope that's helpful. If you could use any more help with your meditation, mindfulness, yoga practices, I'd love to help you bring it home and build it in and personalize so that you can really be tuning yourself to feeling good and loving life more because Life is precious, right? And we might as well. So, so thankful to share with you today. It makes me happy to share with you what I'm learning and sharing and practicing and teaching along the way. So have a good one out there, y'all. See you soon. Namaste.